Peaceful Army. Peaceful Army. Welcome to the podcast of the Peaceful Army. What? Really? And I'm not sorry. What does it mean? Oh my god! Greta's gonna wreck my shit. Yes, I'm obsessed with Greta Van Fleet. And what do you care? I think I'll make this my entire identity. That was not very Peaceful Army of you. If you don't like it, you can fuck off! Welcome to the podcast of the Peaceful Army. I am your Honorable Gresty Lindsay. And I'm Honorable Judge Zoe. <laughs> Giving us the lowdown on fucking everything in the last, like, two months that we haven't talked about. We have so much to talk about. We just need to jump right in. Two feet. We're, let's get them yeah. We're going to start with the latest and upcoming news, all right? This is as of today, <laughs> Friday, August 30th. Josh M. Kiska posts <laughs> on his Instagram a photo of his, I think it's the chandelier suit, with the caption, Stepping into an age of magic. Huh? What? Come again? What? I'm sorry. Wake up! It's the age of I'm magic. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. You what? What? The magic, the music is you. It always was. It always will be. I can't wait. It feels like Josh is, is like entering a new era. Like the color on his Instagram is changing. He's like bringing color back into the mix. It's not all black and white. Uh, I'm freaking out. Yes. Ultimately, yes. Age of Magic. So we have Age of Man, Age of Machine, Age of Magic. Welcome back, Age of M. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here. Mm -hmm. So it's just, what does this mean? What does it mean? Exactly. We, we probably won't know for several. When, when does the tour end? Because this time last year, things were happening. Yes. But for the last couple of shows they're kind of just doing festivals so it's like you do you really want to release new songs at a festival i don't think they'll release new festival songs at a new festival but something could be happening so know. last last show was september 27th in mexico city okay. and i have some unfortunate predictions to lay upon you um i made a few tiktoks about this I don't think we're getting anything till mid next year or late no, next year. No, me either. I do think they will tease us with some shit though. Like that's what I'm ready for is just for them to just just mess around with us again. Yeah. Well, also like if we look at the timeline of their music and like how music is released in general, I think Starcatcher was supposed to be released earlier. Like Yeah. It seems like a very weird turnaround time to have the album come out the same week as the tour. That yeah. doesn't always happen. Usually there's like a few months in between, like especially by the time they come around to like your area, you might have to wait months for them. But they were like quick with it. Yeah. So I feel like maybe that was not their anticipated release date with all the rescheduling and everything that yeah. they had going on. So maybe we were supposed to get Starcatcher in the year. And that would make sense for a sooner timeline of an album to come out well, earlier to mid-2025. But and, but they said like a year ago. Danny said like, oh yeah, we have stuff. So like... he Well, he said we have a double album. Mm -hmm. Which I think means not Starcatcher having a sister album, but that they have... A Enough. double album on the way. I I interpreted it now that I have sat in the stew of Starcatcher for long enough. I interpret it as there was enough music left on the cutting room floor to make a double album. And I have a feeling that they could, if they wanted to, include that with the new stuff that's been being created on tour. But. Hard agree. I think The Archer was meant to be on to bag because it has that same yeah. kind of tones oh, yeah. of it but it didn't fit with the story of tabag so it ends up on Starcatcher, where it is its own completely unique thing among the album it really is archer is very unique in Starcatcher, actually yeah okay, but can we talk about meeting the master though that too that is also we've talked about it we did that whole episode about triple mm -hmm. fantastic and meeting the master mm -hmm. how they're connected did we do that episode or did we just talk about it no, you did it. You made a presentation. Oh. <laughs> See, we've only done 20. This is 20 20 episodes. Yay, we made it, guys. Yay. 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 But um it's 
been a while, so <laughs> it it has been a while. Yeah, uh, I'm out of that was practice. probably October. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god, a year ago. Wait, Zoe, our friend anniversary is coming up. I know. I just got a notification from Tumblr that was like, "Congratulations on your one year," and I was like, Aww. "That's where I met. That's where I like first met a bunch of my friends." Oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh my yeah. god, it is so. Wait, can we just take a moment for a moment for gratitude and reflection? Because it is so crazy how much my life has changed, how much your life has changed since we. <laughs> yeah, the way you're looking, since, like not for the better. <laughs> since we dove into Greta, my I don't even um, know. Like there was some cosmic shit going on. They seriously, completely changed my life because it wasn't Literally. until I started like really getting into them that I was like oh my god I don't like the life that I'm living and what am I living for and I need to change that and be happy Literally. and now I have a completely different life in eight months because I just trusted in myself and what I wanted and that's thanks to how they made me feel which is crazy that a band did that to me but at the same time, like it was always within you. It's just this community and the inspiration from this art form is like bringing you into the life that you want to have. <laughs> I'm in my thought? new place. Yes. New place. I you feel exactly place. the same way. Who would have thought? You'll you'll change eventually. You'll you'll become accustomed. You'll you have like a whole house to yourself now. You're like a whole thing. A whole nice. I have a garage. Ooh. Let's go garage check. Uh, I'm not like rich or anything. It just happened. I don't know, but <laughs> we love but it. You know what? I'm I'm wealthy in gratitude lately because I don't know. It's just, it is. It's crazy to think like this. It was around this time last year that like we met, and it's just wow. Everything yeah, because has... my start catcher show was the twelfth. Yeah, wow. and yours wasn't long after mine. So. No. Yeah, Google's been reminding me of my my time. <laughs> I, I, I keep those reminders and swipe them away. <laughs> I can't wait to be this way for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eh, eh, Love that eh, we've been eh. embossed. We have, yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. I I don't know what's up to come. Whoa, what is coming up? Uh -huh. There we go. But every time I talk about them, I made a TikTok today and I was like, I don't think they're going to tease us with anything and we're going to enter a dry spell and blah, blah, blah. Enter and Josh. then Josh posts. And I'm like, <laughs> he said, He's bitch, listening. hold He's my, listening. hold my phone. That's funny. Um, they all collectively remembered their Instagram passwords this past week. They Even really Sam did. put something on his story. Uh -huh. They're waking up. Wake up. Yeah, what's up with that song? I like it a lot. Like it's it's I think it will be it will become one of my favorites, I think. It's gonna be my alarm. I'm a, yes, it should be. But it might also wake you up in a kind of mood you don't need to be in for those like, hey guys, I'm in a deep Josh down again. Hi. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. I'm not. I just appreciate him in a completely different way. So it might be fine for me, but for you, no. I But I want to go on to my silly little iTunes app store, find the song, buy it for $1.29 so I can have it as my alarm in the morning. Yeah. Just like the olden days. I um, think the last song I bought turned into an alarm. It might have been the last song I've ever bought on iTunes was Trumpets by Jason Derulo. So this will be a big step up. Trumpets by Jason. Wait, what song is that? Wait, how does that go? And the trumpets, they go. Da, 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 wow. da, 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 da. Yeah, that's how long. Wow. So incredible. I'll buy Greta just for them to support them. You know what mine was? What? Fireflies by All City. A million fireflies. I'm weird because I hate good boys. I got misty eyes as they said farewell. I love Dalson. Uh, anyways, we know. <laughs> we know. We know. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. That happened. And so that did Royal Arbor Hall, and I'm eternally dying um, and excited to hear from our guest about it. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so we have a special guest, guys, so stay tuned. We're just yapping for a little bit, and then we're going to get into our guest. But let's do a brief chat about Royal Albert. Crazy. <laughs> they they supposedly filmed it. There were signs up around the venue that said, no flash photography, filming in effect. So, but I Red Rocks wait. took like a year to come out before they released it, so. Yeah. And it seemed like it was almost a thing that was like, hey, give them this while it's COVID, you know? Yes. So who knows? But that sign has never been put up at any other venues that we've been to in the past year. So I don't know. It could be for just them personally, for their own memories. <laughs> I feel like that would kind of be a waste. To know yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm i sure we'll get something at some point. I mean, come on now. They know, they know we want content. They want to feed it to us. Maybe they we'll be getting us... a documentary. I know we're getting a documentary. I feel like that's probably part of the reason why we don't see as many funny TikToks anymore. Because, like, mm -hmm. they're just always filming, like, for that, you know? Very well could be. Um... I don't, I don't know. Like some of their stuff does look like very documentary and like the videos they've been posting. And I'm like, ah, cool. But are they trying to be documentary-esque or are they trying to be like artsy? Mm, I, don't I don't know. So. I don't know. <laughs> but Royal Albert. So beautiful. Should I tell you a little bit about. Tell me everything. Because... From my perspective. Yes, because you went on the tour, you, you know, yeah. saw God. Let me speak on that. Speak on the <laughs> tour. Speak on that. So, so Bessie, boyfriend Cooper, and I are sitting in this little coffee shop. It's our first full day in London. We had got mm -hmm. there the day before, like early in the morning. So we hadn't really done much, and we had no plans during the day before the concert, because I was like, I don't know. I just want to go on a whim, whatever. So first thing I see when I'm scrolling through the podcast Instagram stories is I think it was Nessa GVF is her Instagram had posted that there was a Royal Albert tour and that we should go mm -hmm. on it. And I was like, oh, Cooper, we should do this. We should do this. Like, let's go see the history of it. Like, I want to see it before we get in there, too, so I can get a little bit of like lay of the land. So I'm not as freaked out when I get there. So he's like, OK, yeah, let's go. Which I wasn't expecting him to be like, yeah, but he was. So that was mm -hmm. great. Um, we walk in to the Royal Albert. Anyways, we're in this group. There are some lovely people in it. Um, I forget names so easily. And especially because if I don't have your account name. So I'm very sorry. I don't remember the name of this girl that I met on the tour. But she said she'd gotten a postcard from us. And I was like, mm. oh, my God, it's okay. Um, and there are a few other like. Greta girls in the group that we were in. So that was nice that like we all kind of were there for the same reason. So our tour guide is walking us around and he's like, all right, I'm going to show you into this booth so you can see inside here. If you take pictures, the band members cannot be in them. So if a band member is out there, you need to tell me and I will ask you to put your phones away. Soon as we step out, who's out there but Daniel Wagner? Did it! And he's just like <laughs> slicking around, you know, like shaking people's hands, talking, being Daniel Wagner. And I'm like, uh, he's not looking at any of us. Of course. Totally cool with that. Ignore us, please, actually. <laughs> so we're Ignore like, oh my God, oh my God. So they're doing all their tests or whatever. We sit there for a few minutes. Danny leaves and then we can like talk and take pictures. And breathe. Um, <laughs> and breathe. So actually I have some pictures that I can, I can share. Let's see if I can get it open. Okay, so this is a picture that I got. This is the second location that our tour guide brought us to. So you can like really see everything when there aren't a ton of people in there, especially like how not, like it's big, but it's not, it just looks big because it's open. Like it's just wide it's full it's like round yeah. in a in a way that like structures aren't anymore these days that's so cool right and if you look to your left you can see those little like galleys with the hallways lit up uh -huh. so we uh -huh. were like dead center in one of those looking across mm -hmm. and that's where we saw danny so cool crazy so we're then he brings us up to the top this is standing only so 
imagine like standing up here and seeing the show too that's incredible to be up there and do that so cool so we were in seats in these little like inner circle seats um i think about like 20 over from the stage so not bad um and actually the way that it's all set up like it's really not a bad view wherever you are so this was where from where we were sitting so it was it was still oh my god (laughs) yeah i love that suit we go no wait i was gonna finish my story oh i'm sorry i just i was just gonna describe the suit i'm talking about it's the red one with the The candlelight yeah yeah like arch okay beautiful Go go back okay so after we go up to the standing thing, we go back down because the guy felt like he had some more stuff to talk about, but then, you know, Danny was there, blah, blah, blah. So we head back downstairs. He's like, ah, actually, we won't go in the room. And then I, the girl who had nudged me at the beginning of the tour, like, nudges me again. She's like, Jake's in there. And <laughs> I, like, peek through the curtain, and there he is on stage doing his little thing. He's like, so yeah that was like a really great start to the day we get back to the hotel we eat we get ready we get dressed we get over and then it kind of was just all fun and chaos we got there right at doors open got a poster woohoo which also i was kind of bummed that the only merch that they had that was special was a poster and it's yeah smaller than the normal ones and it was mm. like way more expensive so i was like Damn. all right i'll do was it, it for you guys normal paper was it like gilded or it was like a little bit of thicker paper and it almost looks like it was like graphite like that kind of like shiny lead look to it so it didn't have like quite the embellishments like this it's a really well done art piece but it was Mm -hmm. like 50 50 pounds which is like 65 us yeah so -hmm. that's like 15 dollars more than the bigger posters we get back at home so i think that's just the state of capitalism lately Yep. Everything is worse quality for more money, but that's yep. cool that you got one. Yeah, it it was cool. It was just annoying to have to carry it around the whole night. But yeah, that's the only merch I got. I was very proud of myself. Kind of glad they didn't have other t-shirts and stuff, but yeah. it was still good. Um, and I met a lot of like friends over there it was great i met uh met up with nessa who had told us to do the tour earlier in the day um i met this woman emma who she was like i've seen you on my tiktok feed and we were she was right in front of me in the line in front of our like area to walk in we were chatting she was so nice talking about her concert experiences um i met flavia yeah so that was fun i think i'm saying her name right i'm so bad with saying people's names right so i'm sorry Mm -hmm um and um i met a few other grestes i i think their name was lee came up to me who's been like on our podcast stuff for a while like in our lives was always commenting and came up to me and was like you know i wanted to come here because you guys said it was like a good vibe to go to the concerts and i was like (laughs) i love so and then i got sequestered not sequestered that's not the right word i got kind (laughs) of called out in the bathroom which was really Uh funny i was like washing my hands and one girl like looked over at me and i heard her like like her breath (laughs) pitching i was like she's like wait a minute (laughs) she was like you're zoe right and i was like "Uh uh-huh she's like i'm billy i fall upon and i was like oh i was like do you want to take a picture maybe out there and not in the bathroom she's like yeah so we we went out and Uh, it was just so nice to run into people and like a completely different vibe than i've had at the u.s star catcher shows because mm-hmm. usually i feel so like oh my god i don't know anybody here i don't know if Nervous, they know who i am yeah. or people just look because that'll happen sometimes where people will just look at me and they won't say hi and i'm like yeah do you want me to come up to you and say yeah. hi to you do you recognize yeah. my face is this a weird moment if i say hi i feel like too like every everybody's like following them all over the country right so like depending on where you are in the united states culturally it's just different but it seems to me like when you're at a european show everybody's pretty chill and it just makes for a nicer experience like everybody's immediate friends rather than like you know competition exactly it's friends not competition that sounds yeah that sounds nice i wish (laughs) i know someday um but it was just a lovely show to hear talk on the street in the year of 2024. <laughs> I was like, 
It's so cool. Gag on the floor. Yeah. And it's actually like a really funny thing. Um, my best friend Dom and I, we have this thing um, where she, I think it was for my birthday party. It was Greta themed and they were playing the whole discography. Talk on the street came on. She goes, you know, you can Cotton Eye Joe to this dance. And I was like, <laughs> you yeah. can. And it lines up perfectly. perfectly. So at the show, I had Cooper record me while I was Cotton Eye Joeing for Dom. And she was it. like, oh my God. So, That's so fun. Um, it was just a great show. Nothing will ever top it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I also met uh, Laura. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was nice after doing that the episode fun. about being excited for Royal yes. Albert and then meeting her in person. That's so, so cool. I feel like yeah. there were just so many cool people there. It was like such a convergence of like really well like cool people who like mean well and yeah that sounds yeah. so fun and the fact you guys got way to dreams <laughs> i know i am very blessed that this time that i've heard it i could actually appreciate it because yes. the first time i didn't so i mean royal albert i'll go through some of my pictures here um this is during light my love on the left and then the right i have no idea what was being played at this time but there hmm. was one like smoke bomb that went off that literally sounded like a freaking gunshot and i was like oh they were so loud in there yeah. it was crazy it's like but, a dome. it all yes. comes back yeah well no because they have these little mushroom thingies that sit up at the Ooh. center of the dome that help prevent that echo cool learned that on the tour but it all it all sent the sound will still reverberate yes. around yeah. it won't it come up doesn't... and down it goes exactly around yeah yeah cool so then we had Josh. b-stage on stage jake and uh sam mm-hmm. and they're all in like new outfits look at sam cheese in sam and black sam and black let's talk about it sam and black talk sam about and black it. with there the white go. little flower the lapel being the sam tradition. side about? I was like, Sam, who on that organ? Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That was like, just be Bach. Why don't you? Yep. Yep. So that was crazy. And then Danny and his little lingerie. <laughs> Josh's hair is so big in that photo. Like you can tell where <laughs> his head stops and his hair just like extends off the back. <laughs> It is, his hair is almost the size of Jake's face. Like, oh looking at it in comparison. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. I included this picture because I love how the low res made Josh look really scary. And, like, he's <laughs> looking right at me and he's coming for me. <laughs> he looks like Johnny Depp. But when he, uh, when he played the fucking wolf <laughs> in Into the Woods. <laughs> oh. That black yes. silk, though, it's so attractive. Oh, my God. I don't love this outfit it's not my favorite <gasps> one that's premiered this blasphemy oh it's definitely not my favorite but i love seeing him in black i just don't like the cut of this specific jumpsuit i like the fabric i'm just not a big fan of the cut it but it does feel very funeralish in the way that it is made so it does give me something to the theme it's the vibe yeah, yeah. it's just not my favorite um, but jake's pants bye goodbye yeah so. Agreed. Okay. Checkbox. We'll move on. And yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then I just had to include this picture of me in our hotel room that was a literal shoebox. For um, our listeners, we see uh, Zoe uh, sitting on the ground. The light is above her head, so it looks very much like a ring photo. Um, and her eyes are very dark, eating a slice of pizza. Cold pizza. On the ground. Yep. Yep. It looks yep. like uh, come play with us. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, I'm wearing SpongeBob socks, but they're mismatched. So mm-hmm. that just adds Important. to it all. Important to also note the open hairspray on the, uh, <laughs> what is that, an ironing board? Yeah, we had no desks and or dressers mm-hmm. in the room. We had to use the ironing board as a table. Good. Good. Yeah. We so. love Europe. We love it. Yes. <laughs> love it. So, we actually do. I want to go back. Yes. Speaking of Europe and going there, we have a special presentation for you all. 
Before we get into that, uh, because we probably won't wrap it up properly, make sure that you follow us on Instagram, on TikTok, on all of those things, and make sure you go follow our guest as well. We're going to have some cool stuff coming out this next week of clips and stuff from the episode, so if you don't have time to watch all of it, you can watch the highlights on those platforms. Absolutely. So, you ready? I'm so ready. I was born ready. All the haptics happening right now are freaking <laughs> me out. My phone is, if anybody's listening, my screen is doing that thing where I did a thumbs up Apple. and it's doing the bubble. But And it happens like all the time anyway. I gotta shut it off. Anyways, let's go over to our guest. Yay. Uh, please welcome to the stage RDH Photography or Ryan as we know him. Woo. Hey. There we go. Now we're ready. We said it right, right? The right handle. It's all good, yeah. Perfect. As I said, yeah. Look at you. You yeah. got merch. We all wow. got We're all one. So you can recognize me at shows. Perfect. <laughs> you got your own marketing. I love it. So, so, so Ryan, you'd said it was your first show, right? So now when when you do go to another show, you can wear the merch and people will know those incredible photos came from you. Yeah, it'd be funny if anyone did actually recognize me. That would be the, a first. Genuinely, though. <laughs> Greta, the Greta fandom is crazy like that, though. Like, when we see some good content, oh, uh, it's like, yeah. I'm well aware now. Yeah. But yeah, they are super fans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even the security guards for Greta are known by name in the fandom. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure some of them might have their own fan pages. So <laughs> once you make, like, a good connection with the girlies, they they, they love hard and they will, they'll appreciate you. So I'm sure if you show up at another show, they'll, they'll point you out. I'm here for it. I, I'm appreciating it. Have Have you been overwhelmed with the amount of uh, Greta people in your comments, or has it been more exciting? It's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, the engagement that it's been getting, the hundred plus DMs in the on Instagram and that is uh, it's unusual compared to like other bands fans that I've photographed before. So it is a unique experience, but yeah, it's cool. Have- I'm here have you it. ever done anything with like fandoms before like i i know you just did metallica right they have a pretty big cool. like following right are you getting as much engagement from yeah. them as you are from uh, not as crazy engagement like as in like people losing their minds <laughs> when you just you give them a little photo of their band <laughs> yeah that is uh we need content and good pictures Messed so, up in the head. <laughs> well, I hope I hope I'm fulfilling that. Yeah, yeah the Jake <laughs> ones that you posted today were were fabulous. We love them. So, oh, thank you. yes. So, Ryan, how long have you been doing photography? Like, is this your main job or? Um. So, I've been doing all different kinds of photography for I don't even know. I can't remember when I started, but. Uh, in terms of just like live music and events, about a year. Cool. So I've done loads of different things. I've done some uh, a stint in fashion and like social media influencing and stuff. And then I was doing just more commercial work. I was working uh, with animals and things like that at one point. So it's been a bit all over the place and I've kind of like never really... Like I've enjoyed it, but I've not connected saying like, oh, this is the one thing I really, like it's really ticking all the boxes for me. And then, yeah, when I got into doing music photography and live events and that, I was like, yeah, this is the one. This is, it's just completely different. It's so full of emotion and it's there, like you're capturing actual moments in time rather than like staging everything. So it is, it's fun, it is good. And I get to go to a lot of free shows, yeah. which is great. Yeah, that is like, great. That's the best part. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it'd be nice if you could have like the guitarist stop and be like, okay, hold right there. You look awesome. Let's go. Like, so I get that. Yeah, then anyone can do it. Right. <laughs> I get that shooting uh, live is kind of a whole different uh, beast. So, how, what are the like struggles with that? Or is it all just kind of like you take it as it goes, you make things work in post, or is it kind of trying to. It's very it? much you, you dealt with the hand that you're given. It is. Uh lighting is a massive struggle because uh some shows are really good they have really bright lights and it's great other shows it's like they don't even want you to see who's on stage which is crazy yeah but you no know, it's it's kind of like you just you just roll with the punches while you're there 
Uh, luckily, with digital cameras, you can just take as many photos as you want. And I do a lot of stuff where I shoot in burst, which is how I'm making like the cool little flicks where it's like the animated photos. And uh, yeah, just so you just sort of go through them all afterwards, pick your good ones, and then show them what you got. Yeah, I mean, the lighting, at least we know from trying to take our own pictures oh, yeah. at Greta shows on our phones, like that red, deep red light that shows up for like yeah. two of the songs. It's like, oh my God, you can barely see any dimension on them. I don't know if you had to deal with any of the crazy colors because you weren't taking pictures for the whole show, right? No, so I was photographing for a British magazine. That's why I was I was there for that show. I, I handpicked that show myself because I wanted to be there. Nice. But yeah, where I was shooting for a magazine, uh, the press get free songs and that is it. So it was a case of luckily the lighting weren't too bad. So as you can see, like the photos come out okay or good in my eyes. Yeah, because <laughs> later in the set, it gets a little darker, more mm. colorful. Yeah. So you got a really good prime time to kind of capture the good moments. Yeah, we got lucky. Yeah. That show, yeah. yeah. So do you get to stick around after you take the pictures? Uh, yeah, so for that, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. For that particular show, I had, like, I was right in the center at, like, the one of the balconies. Nice. So I was, I had, like, probably, or in my eyes, I had the best seat yeah. in the house. It was great. Yeah, front and center. So we were sitting with some of the their PR team and whatnot. So it was just, yeah, enjoying the show. Awesome. How how did that show compare to others? Like Metallica, I'm sure was incredible. I I'm not really I don't remember off the top of my head who else you ph photographed, but um, it's definitely up there as one of the best shows I've ever been cool. to. Hundred percent. It just there was something I don't know. It just felt I don't know how to explain it. It was just like I was really taken back by how like amazing it was. To be fair. It was good. It was good. There was a, like you say, you mentioned Metallica. Metallica, I see headlining Hellfest recently, which is a massive metal festival in France. And I remember I got com absolutely soaked at that one. Yeah. Where it's open air, it was pouring down a rain to the point I could just like wring my t shirt out. Oh. And then it all just stopped as soon as they came on stage. And it was, and then they had a really good set. So that was, that was fun apart from having my phone stolen at the festival, mm. which is, <laughs> it weren't ideal, but you know, we get over it. You win some, you lose some. You get to take pictures from Metallica, but you lose a phone, happens. Yeah. <laughs> that was a deal, yeah. Yeah. So did you get to interact with like a lot of the fans pre-show? I thought I saw that you had made some like connections with some of the people. I was, I'm just a, a really chatty guy. Uh, so anywhere I go, I'll literally, talk to anyone so i think where we came in just before the show started there was a lot of like diehard fans all at the barrier and i could see they was all really excited so i was yeah i was just chatting to a couple some people wanted some photos on their phones so i was taking and getting little photos from them and that and then you could see how much they was enjoying themselves so that's why i like, took it upon myself to get as many photos of the front row and some of the crowd as i could during the show as well which is fun yeah and a lot of people appreciate that as well, oh, yeah. which is good. The, the fans love to get their pictures taken because they a lot of times forget to take their own pictures. Yeah. At least I know There's that. Like, moment. you're so stressed. A lot of those people, I think, were out on the sidewalk most of the day waiting to get in yeah. there. So mm -hmm. you kind of, when you're in the hustle and bustle of everything of trying to get to the front, you're like, shit, I didn't take a picture of my well, outfit. I, I almost felt bad when I see that snaking queue all the way around the building. And I just turn up like 10 minutes before the show and just walk into the box office and like, yep. Yeah, I <laughs> job though, you know, like yeah. our job is yeah. to sit on the concrete. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, this Barbie's job is to sit on the concrete all day. <laughs> not th not me. I was in a seat, but the other Barbies were out there. Worth it for you guys. Though. Hmm? It's worth it for you. Yeah. You enjoy it. We do. Uh, we have a little bit of like animosity towards, you know, making it more than like a day of sitting out on the concrete because yeah. that happens to some shows. But, you know, yeah. you can see the passion in the music and the passion in the people. So it all it all kind of makes sense why we do it. So, I mean, you were there for one show and it, it hit you in that way. Yeah. So imagine the, the people yeah, who've been to After eight. that one, I was like, definitely is not going to be my last show. Good, good. Do you have a favorite song that you've seen? Already. Um, 
I would say during that performance, probably Weight of Dreams, just because of the solo. It was just, <laughs> you just, you're just sitting there watching that solo like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then... so that's, probably, that's probably my favorite part of the performance. <laughs> I like singing along to Safari songs. Yeah. They don't play either of those songs very often, so the yeah. crowd really gets amped up for them. Weight of Dreams, it had been over like a year since we've heard it live, maybe almost two. Oh, wow. So it had been I've a while. Heard it live. I've never, it's probably one of my most favorite songs of theirs. I've never heard it live. So. Well, yeah. Oh, my. we'll have to bring you over to London next time. You're coming. I know. I want to come. I really want, I feel like that venue especially, how, how did you, so you were with a British uh, like magazine. Have you ever shot yeah, yeah. in Royal Albert Hall before? Was that like your first no, venue? No, like first that? time for the venue as well for me. I've done a, quite a lot of the London venues, but that one, because I predominantly do heavier music, mm -hmm. it's not a venue that tends to have heavy music. It's more classical and things like that. But um, they're trying to branch more into other genres to make it more popular to everyone. So it's actually the first time I've ever been in that venue. So mm -hmm. it was embracing the venue itself as well as my first one of their shows as well that's so yeah it was it was a pretty breathtaking experience that's yeah and great. to be right down in that center like i don't think people realize that it is quite literally like a big oval though mm -hmm. every seat yeah. is filled except for like the booths that they rent out to the royalty and the rich people but almost every seat is filled whether it's behind the stage in front of the stage so to like yeah exactly look up and see everybody it's kind of a big shock and then you got that organ right in front of you too oh my gosh oh, beautiful, right? yeah nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pipes that's insane Crazy. Wow. the big organ so i did the tour cool. that's why i know everything about this <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, do you have any questions you want me to throw another one out there well yeah i think where was my thought process going with that i was Albert Hall is such an incredible, like historic venue. I want to go so bad. Oh my God. Um, you know what? I'll let you jump back in because I don't remember where I was going with that. Yeah. So we've already established that now you're a fan. Um, <laughs> but. Well, I've been a fan for a little while. Oh, you while. have? Okay. Just, yeah. just for yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's that's why I made sure that I covered that show. So how. So I tried to do the other London shows. Um, it got taken by another photographer. And then that's why when the Royal Albert Hall one come up, I was like, no, there's no question about it. You are putting me on that show. Yeah, I already got yeah. taken from you once, not again. Yeah. So how long have you been listening to their music then? Oh, probably not that long to be fair, about a year or so. Okay, that's a- So yeah, was, I just, yeah, discovered them. And like you say, it's one of them, It it's just shocking the first time you hear them mm -hmm. because it like, I feel like they are like the Led Zeppelin of uh, the new generation kind of thing. That's how I describe yep. it. It just it's uh, they have the similarities, but it just sounds so fresh and raw as well at the same time. Yeah, definitely. And there is some controversy with the whole Led Zeppelin stuff, but honestly, I don't get why it's such a, a big comparison. deal to co to compare it's, them. It's because of his voice and Robert Plant's voice. That's that's what it is. They both got absolute belting voices. Yeah. I mean, killer. And you can, you can, yeah. But I, people will draw similarities and will say, "Oh, it's the same." But they, they've got their own sound, and it, it does sound just, it does sound new when you hear their songs and you hear them play. It sounds new. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's fair to say that they sound like a newer version of Zeppelin, but I just don't agree when people are like, "They're a cover band. They're copies." You know, it's like yeah. that's what I'm like. But they have their own thing. And I don't think we're putting that into consideration. So, well, you can't deny that it's talented. Like, yeah. oh my god! And it, you especially can't when you see it live. So to have seen, yeah. yeah, to to have seen that specific show live. I mean, they were. It seemed from what I have seen, and you know, the fact that they were being filmed even outside of photography, they're being filmed for like a movie or mm -hmm. whatever, what a show. Um, they seem to have been on their like triple A game. You know what I mean? So yeah. 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 It, Do they always have like a a gap in the middle of the show, like as if it was like a um like a theater show almost? No, they usually don't. So it's usually 
the like first six or seven songs and then they have a b stage where they go play like only acoustic songs and they do three of those and then they go back and finish it off at the main stage so they don't typically have like a whole 15 minute break but this was also a longer show than they usually do so Mm -hmm. could be a venue thing made it like a like a theater show like you were seeing an experience rather than just a live music show like even yeah. just down to having that interval and everything. the intermission well that seems to me like what they would prefer you know like they're very theatrical guys it seems to be like that's yeah. the setup that would really like serve their music the best because it's story based like an actual show like a you know opera that mm-hmm. you'd see or a musical yeah 100 percent also, they they pulled out a lot of what we would call as their lore songs, like stories that tie into their yep. characters that we think that they're talking about in the song. So they played a lot of those. So to do that and then kind of have that little break in the middle, it did feel very much like a real play, which, again, I think is is kind of cool. Yeah, it all ties in. So there. I'm just crying. Oh, my God. Because that's, that's literally all we ever talk about is just like all of the... You know, like it, there's a surface level listening and then, you know, you get to the level where we're at where it's like, oh, no, I love this group. I love what they're doing. And then you start to kind of unravel mm-hmm. even deeper. Like, is there a story happening here? Like, are they intentional in these like the names of these songs? And yeah, it's cool. yeah. yeah, we're a little a band that I would love to go on tour with. 100%. Oh, yeah. Uh, we would be infinitely jealous of you. So <laughs> we hope that you get that opportunity um, because the there's just so much magic in every show and truly and honestly, like no show is the same. So I imagine as Mm -hmm. like taking pictures for them would be a completely different story each night. Like they just had a show a few months back where they were playing like out in the rain and they like Mm -hmm. were just playing in the water, what everywhere. Like, so I can imagine like a show like that, must be like amazing to take pictures of because it's so different or like royal albert they pull out the old song so it's just always evolving the fans are always different you'll see a lot of outfits if you end up going on tour with them yeah that's the only thing i didn't get any outfit changes because Mm -hmm. he i i had stopped taking photos before he started doing that yeah so that's why all the photos it's like oh they're all looking a bit the same now (laughs) that's all right we love them regardless. That that one yeah. jumpsuit that Josh is in that you have pictures of is like a fan favorite. So you got us locked in there. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's you, my favorite part sometimes. You what? I was going to ask if you had another question. I have one more on my list, but I wanted to give you the chance before. No, you go ahead. Me go ahead? Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice or any like memorable experiences about starting off as a concert photographer? Like, did you have any big fuck ups that made you learn down the line kind of how to fix things early on rather than dealing with the consequences later? Uh, I think it's just like, I just dived in. I figured it out for myself. I think that in terms of if you wanted to get into it, the best camera that you to use is the one you've got and to just just go out and take photos i the way that i started was um so before even just the idea of doing concert photography i kind of had stopped taking photos for quite a while didn't know what to do uh well into my music so i just went oh, i'm just gonna learn how to play the guitar i just i need a hobby i'm one of those people who just need to be doing something all the time and then i started taking guitar lessons with uh, a guy that's in he's in a band is we've become really good friends now and i photograph all their shows but i was just yeah as i was there i was like i really like the guitars i don't know whether i'm gonna be a really successful musician so i went maybe i need to combine the two things like my photography and this and just try that so i started photographing just like pub shows and stuff like that local bands just to sort of get a feel for it and i was like yeah i love this and then it's just a case of just keep doing what you can do. If you know any people that are musicians, just photograph them for free. Offer up your services for bands and say, look, 
let me come take photos for nothing uh, for, for my portfolio. You can have the photos for free. But, and then, yeah, I just started reaching out to bigger and bigger artists once I had a bit more of a portfolio. And then it just, yeah, just went from there. And then magazines reached out to me and said, hey, can you come shoot for us? I was like, yeah, sure. And then you start working with bands where they're paying you to photograph their shows and just sort of keeps going and going. And I'm just rolling with it. That's cool. Trying to market myself as best as I can along the way so I can keep going. Love it. So is that all within the past year, did you say that you've been doing this? Yeah, I, I'm a... I'm, I don't, my personality is if I like something, I just completely become obsessed with just that one thing. Oh, yeah. And so when I was like, right, I'm going to do music photography now, I just done it as many times as I could all the time and then straight away tried to get like a message, loads of uh, artist managers saying, let me shoot this for nothing, let me shoot this. Got some pretty big London shows and then, yeah, straight on the magazines. As soon as I was in them, I was going, trying to do every show I can. Uh, jumped on any festival opportunity they gave me and then just yeah I was like okay now I need uh, I need to create like a brand that's why so when I go to shows I've got everyone can see who I am and then you kind of remember who you are and then just talk to everyone every every time I go to a show talk if I can speak to the artist speak to the artist if I can speak to the fans speak to them and then yeah now I'm uh, developing a website I've got the print shop open now so people can buy prints of any of the photos that which is going quite well i've had quite a few orders already Ma mainly one band in particular but <laughs> yep that'll do it yeah we love it and just yeah just just keep rolling with it don't stop that's really great cool. well i i do also have to ask do you have more greta pictures to put out i feel like you're just <laughs> pumping them out like what is going to happen when you run out and the greta <laughs> girls come hunt you down yeah eventually there won't be any left because like i had what average songs four minutes i had tw uh 12 minutes of taking photos that is my only time i have so yeah yeah i can't survive forever but we might not be run out yet <laughs> okay great because they might like try to get you in on some shows at that point to get more they might need it well, i hope so i mean if people can do what they want if they want me to be at more shows make it can make some noise exactly <laughs> well i think I would want nothing more than to be at more shows. So. Well, we're going to try to get you there. I mean, the Greta fandom, when we like something, we like something. And I can say for a lot of us, like, your photos are so high quality and detailed and crisp. And we don't always get a lot of those when people mm. go to take pictures at the shows. They're trying to do something moody, which is super cool and adds a lot of, like, fun looks to it. But also... We just want a high quality picture where they're not all red and blue, like just a nice crisp picture of Josh. Like that's all we need sometimes. And I feel like you've been able to provide that, which has been kind of nice. Oh, thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, I mean, obviously like you are a lover of live music. You're and do you uh, make music? Like, do you put out? Oh, I don't. Oh. I'm terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I, I'm good at making live music look good. That's <laughs> all you need sometimes. But I feel like though, like that's so, I mean, obviously like you're an artistic human being and you have a good eye for that stuff, but like, that's really, it seems like there are very few Greta fans who are not also artists and like good at that kind of stuff. Like yeah. the more people that I meet, the more people that are like contributing to their art, like being inspired by Greta and then also just like being good musicians and artists in general. Like Zoe is also a photographer. I'm trying to get into it. Nice. <laughs> I'm not a concert. Oh my God. I hate when the stupid Apple does that. <laughs> um, I like to think of myself as a good photographer, but I've also just, it depends. Like I tried concert photography. I brought like a, you know, lensless camera in and I, I can't, mm -hmm. I don't have a steady hand for it. And if you smidgen move just a little bit, sometimes that one shot that you thought you'd get gets all blurry. And then I get, defeated so i don't know if you've ever experienced you that because if you don't believe in yourself no one will so you gotta have your own bag that's true that's true Period. i did i am my own biggest fan and i will always be. yeah well, i mean you're wearing there the merch you so you're representing yeah. you have to yeah but i mean photography can be really fun but also like a pain in the ass sometimes so I, I'm, I'm happy to see that you like found your 
how do you say it? niche niche i don't know niche. niche you found your niche and that it excites you because it's very clear to see that mm -hmm. well i do all sorts that's just like the the most fun one i do like commercial do some weddings do all that kind of stuff as well but this is like when i'm really having the most fun 100 percent. love that i mean it shows like i said it's it's very it's awesome work and we all appreciate oh, yeah. it i'm, I'm gonna speak Lindsay and i will speak on the behalf of the yeah. peaceful army of the army if yeah. you if you need us to keep reaching quotas on your instagram to post pictures we'll do, we'll it. do it we'll share you. it well if you if you keep blowing them up they'll keep coming yes <laughs> yeah and then we hope that you don't run out of pictures you might have to start like rationing them off so they can keep us well, well you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do something to to get me noticed and put me on one of the tours we'll try our best <laughs> we don't know them but we'll try our best <laughs> well i feel like a lot of the greta fans also enjoy music in general like a lot of people go to many different shows like that's their thing and so i don't know i love seeing like all photography especially greta but concert photography in general. Oh, creativity spurs creativity. Exactly. Yes. And it, it reminds yeah. you of that experience that you had or the one that you wanted to have if you weren't at Royal Ever. Oh, <laughs> every time yeah. I look at a photo, I'm like, oh man, I feel it. Like, oh, it, it, it was probably such a good experience. And you can see like just a moment in time and it just gives you that serotonin, like surreptitiously. It's like an extra, like, yeah. you know, it just, it's, it's a good little hit. It's great. Yeah. There'll be more special shows. You've got a lot more to come. Yeah, the, they're young lads, they're the same age as me. So yeah, they're just about. I'm trying to think. They 2017 is when they started, so they haven't even reached 10 years yet. So they got some yeah. some other big things to do in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So maybe we'll all be there one day see, together. See you there at the 10 year reunion, guys. Yes, at the 10 yeah. year the 10 year anniversary tour at that World Hour. Oh my God, shut up! That'd be incredible. A ten year. Would be. Well, okay. I need to get the out. team back together. Let's let's exactly. plan it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for coming on here today. Is there any parting wisdom that you'd like to leave with the fandom or any messages that you'd like to leave with them? Some shout outs. Put me in the spot now. Just you it's your spot. It's your you spot. guys are amazing. And I uh, love all the support. Just I can't say I've, I've felt more welcome by a group of individuals. Love that. That's I'm sorry the moment was ruined by the motorcycle <laughs> outside of my house, but I love that. But thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, this is a very special, our 20th episode, so you're kind of at like a big marker for us. So we're so <laughs> excited that you came on. And Lindsay, do you want to? Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Lindsay, you want to close us out? Yes, they can follow you at RDH Photography. Yeah, on Instagram. RDH. RDH Photography on Instagram. It's pretty much the main one for posting. Cool. And yeah, if you like any of the photos on there, you can click the link in the bio to the shop. Or if there isn't any on the shop, just message me and it'll get put on there. Fantastic. Great. I'm definitely going to hit that up. I got to put some stuff on my wall. It's very empty. Yeah. Need some photos. Yes. Yay. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. This was great. Nice. Oh. Goodbye, peace. See you soon on the show. Yes. yes. And nice goodbye show. to the our peaceful army fans and friends. We will see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.